It is a biblical urban legend that Lucifer was the angel of music in heaven. Many people claim that Lucifer was the head of the choir in heaven, responsible for creating the music and worship of God. While the Bible never truly indicates that Lucifer was the angel of music, this is a myth that seems to be true, as the music industry clearly points to serving Lucifer. The music industry doesn't hide its admiration for the devil. While most people call this satanic imagery edgy and just done for shock value, this former rapper confirms this isn't the case, admitting that at one point he was actively serving Lucifer with his music. Hey guys, I hope all is well. Welcome back to The Truth Is, where I drop new videos every other day exposing the truth. In today's episode, we will be talking about the ex-rapper who exposed his former pack with the devil. Let's get right into it. Most people think the thought of artists selling their souls is ridiculous. They call it conspiracy theory nonsense, as most people nowadays don't believe in the devil, let alone selling your soul. When they see people calling out artists using satanic imagery, they brush it off as shock value, claiming the artist is only using that satanic imagery to cause controversy and garner attention. The thing is, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. The devil doesn't want the masses to believe in his existence, as doubting his existence only makes it easier for him to misguide you. This is exactly why so many people are lost today, as they embrace sin and evil just as Lucifer wants them to because they don't believe in God nor the devil. The devil loves helping you destroy yourself. He encourages you to do it. He rewards those who promote his ideology through their music with fortune and fame. Using those artists to spread his ideas of self-worship that have been corrupting man since the days in the garden. Lucifer depends on those who serve him and sell their souls to push his agenda. He works through them to influence you to worship yourself just like he wants you to. These artists that know the truth about this spiritual world we live in already know that in order to become a star, you must serve Lucifer. That's why these artists involve themselves with the occult and Satanism. This is how they learn to channel these deities in order to bargain with them and use them to get what they want. Since the beginning of the music industry, we have heard of the tales of artists selling their souls. I know many of you have heard of the story of Robert Johnson, the blues musician from the 1930s who was rumored to have sold this soul to the devil on the crossroads. The story goes, Robert wanted to be a music star since he was a young man, but unfortunately for him, he wasn't any good at making music. He tried playing his guitar for anyone who would listen, but he was horrible and nobody wanted to hear him play. This led Robert to the crossroads in Mississippi where he met a mysterious tall man who was willing to help him for a price. This mysterious man told Robert he can make him the blue star he dreamt of being, for a small price of course. He wanted Robert's eternal soul. Johnson, desperate to make it, took the deal, giving this mysterious man his guitar, with the man tuning it, playing it, and returning it back to Robert. He then instructed Robert to play the guitar, and when he did, he went from an amateur player to a master guitarist instantly. The strange man then disappeared, and Robert would then end up becoming a blue star. He would play his guitar for those who mocked him before, showing them his new skills. These people were left shocked as Robert somehow went from an amateur to a master overnight. He quickly became famous in his town and in surrounding towns for his new style of blues. People couldn't get enough of his mesmerizing music. Some people were left suspicious of his new skills as they knew he was known to go to the crossroads at midnight. Robert wouldn't get to enjoy his fame for long as not long after he made that deal, he passed away in a mysterious way that was never solved. People in the town Johnson was from believed that he didn't pass away, but he was taken away. His soul was collected by the tall mysterious man he sold this soul to for those guitar skills. While most people see this as an urban legend, this is the truth about fame. To this day, artists are selling their souls to the devil in order to be rewarded with fame and fortune. And this is exactly what Dennis Stevenson admitted, who was once a rapper that went by the name WAP with the plays. A couple of weeks back, Dennis did an interview with the creator Corey Yeshua where he revealed that while he was trying to make it in the music industry, he aligned himself with the devil, openly choosing to serve the deity Baphomet in order to become successful. During those days, Dennis managed to perform with some big artists who were also serving the devil, making songs with artists like Little Tracy and performing alongside Cardi B and others. Dennis admits he chose to serve Baphomet and dedicate his music to pushing his agenda. I was called King Extortion 
You signed a deal with Satan in order to be in his kingdom and you were going to be used in music just as a tool in order to gather souls. I got initiated was when I seen Baphomet. This was before everything takes off. Satan is not going to let you take off unless mm. he initiates you. Now after this happened, I was extortioning in 666. Now I had the tattoo extortion in my forehead. I fully embraced the darkness and I just thought it was just music. I just thought, okay, maybe it's just music. It was more than music. As a very special testimony of that I believe is going to touch many lives. Dennis Stevenson, definitely raised in Miami. I was in a car, young, rapping the DMX. I put Young Jeezy on, he put Lil Wayne on. You were influenced by yeah, that music. kind of music. I try to tell people how powerful music is. Not only did I grow up listening to certain kind of music and it put me in certain kind of moods and made me want to do certain things, but I also did music and was in the music industry for years. Yeah. So I know the impact that it has on people. Mm -hmm. People don't understand that there's, there's spirits in this music and attached mm -hmm. to this music. And a lot of people get into things behind the scenes that they put into the music. And the enemy uses the music. We're mm -hmm. professional criminals. So you guys were doing like breaking and entering. I'm not proud of it, but yeah, most of us went to jail. Yeah, I'm actually on the news. I'm trying to somebody. This is when my older, my older brother passed away. And then that's mm -hmm. when Satan began to put that trauma in my heart and now I was like I was full, fully possessed. The music industry oh. side, how far you went in that realm and the things you experienced in mm -hmm. that realm. So who did you, would you say you met first? I was in the streets at the time and the person that was leading the pact on this end was Triple X. XX, Tentacion, Jose, on first. Yeah, we went to the same school. He's lit up, he's on fire for Satan, I'm on fire for Satan too, so we two are the ones that's leading. But mind you, X was still doing music at that time. Mm -hmm. I was more in the streets and I just thought it was just music. I just thought, okay, Okay, maybe it's just music. It was more than music. When my older brother passed away in 2017, once that trauma hit, that took me to another level of darkness. Now, mind you, at that time, I just did a show with uh, Cardi B, Kodak, Young Boy. This is called Trap Circus 2017. Um, at that time, it was like I was in, we went to this house. It was hell in that house. An open portal of hell in that house. I mean, they're doing drugs. The music is like, mm. like we're all manifesting in there all together. Ah, we're all doing it. And that spirit came within me. And he imparted me his his vision and his goal that he wanted to wanted to bring forth mm. and you know who they idolizing who they represent is the Baphomet that's the image that he's portraying and when you see this agenda that men turn into women women turn into men no that's the agenda that ultimately that he wanted to push now already seen it he has a mark too and his agenda is to turn you away and to twist you into something that was never meant to be. I'm not looking at the demise. I'm not looking at the downfall. I'm not looking at the people that I'm going to influence to represent Satan and ultimately send those people to hell. Like the demons are literally coming out of them. This isn't a rock show. No, this is a church. The music that we're playing is the worship. When we're moshing, we're opening up a portal. That reminds me of the Travis Scott show where they were doing the mosh pit and all those people end up dying and it was a kid who even died. And he had all type of imagery that had like portals. His a mouth. man going through a por portal mm -hmm. and becoming a red like a demon, like his, his face as a bat like leading up to that show yes. and then that stuff ended up happening and people were saying that it was a yes. it was like a ritual every man. concert is a ritual I have people drawing uh, pentagrams on my concerts on the floor mm. image the beast that was in me I was sewing it into them but you can definitely open your soul to some things it's like a church service but for the dark side and all these entities are just yes. starting to grab hold of people man it's really deep you know mm. people need to understand this stuff is all spiritual and the spiritual realm is very real but but if there's a dark side, guess what? There's also a light side. Amen. You ended up being pulled out of that darkness. And then um, I went and I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, you know, if you real, show me. And I'm seeing it. Now my eyes are fully open. All those demons were literally, con like, they had chains on me. We were in a covenant. Like, we were in a blood covenant. As you heard for yourself, Dennis admits that he sold his soul to the devil while he was chasing fame. He felt that he was being used by Lucifer to influence people into sinning and to guide them away from God. Dennis said that his music was leading people to hell, opening spiritual portals that were consumed people's soul. He also admitted that he was being possessed by the spirits that were using him. Dennis also spoke about Travis Scott and his astral world ritual. I exposed the situation when it happened for being a ritual. Travis Scott is a Freemason occultist and it's the reason he was banned from performing in Egypt. This man, although he was lost and committed to the enemy, states that God saved him 
and pulled them out of that dark world. Lucifer, Baphomet, whatever he calls himself, is no match for God. God can always get you out of everything and anything. People choose to live in this belief that this is going on, even when rappers are showing us this in their videos. So many music videos have this dark demonic imagery. Serpents and rituals, or the literal devil, are all placed in these music videos. These artists openly worship the devil and people pretend not to see it. For example, Little Uzi Vert, one of the biggest artists of the last 8 years, has had satanic imagery since the start of his career, using satanic occult imagery in many of his videos and songs. Even though Uzi wears inverted crosses and other anti-Christian symbols, most people don't believe he's really worshipping the devil. They think he does all that stuff for attention, even when Uzi admits he sold his soul and is out here taking his fans to hell. I know you guys remember this clip of Uzi straight up telling his fans at his concert that they were all going to a burning end with him. Or when he told his fans he sold his soul to the devil. Hold on, let me explain something to them real quick. Before everybody starts screaming and saying, oh, like I told y'all earlier, you motherfuckers that entered the rapture. And if ain't nobody flying up to heaven right now, obviously all y'all motherfuckers going to hell. Right with me. So, Let's get it. Did I sell my soul? I sold my soul for you. Y'all coming right with me, you dummies. Even with rappers like Little Uzi straight up confessing to serving the devil, people still deny it. They act like it doesn't exist. It wasn't just Little Uzi that admits this either, as a former Irish pop star Shane Lynch admitted the same thing, admitting that the mainstream music industry serves the devil. Hacker side of the world, Ouija boards, uh, Ouija boards, uh, seances, all that kind of spiritual tar tarot card reading, all that yeah. stuff really got a hold of me. And interestingly, that all came from our very first album launch, which you would say, which you would look at very innocently. It was around Halloween, it was a Halloween party in a big mansion. But in that was super demonic, super demonic. But for this young kids, it's a, bit of, it's a bit of fun. The record company are there and all the, the journalists are there, and here we go. But when I look at the, the way the industry, um, has the ruling over music. Now, of course, not all music is bad. By all means, it's not. But majority of it there is to take you away from Christ. 100% take you away from Christ. In terms of the lyrics, and the, is that what you mean? Or do you mean industry itself, people, the big players in the industry? Both, lyrically and both big players. Both, um, I've been in rooms at the, the top of the top, which albums are prayed over demonically. Music is prayed over demonically. And that goes out to the world, goes out to the radio stations, goes out to the public. And when you see that stuff and know that stuff, it's frightening. What do you mean by that, Shane? Prayed over demonically? So uh, rituals, ceremonies, everything to bring, uh, to give light to, to, to the devil, to Satan. It's, it's a satanic music industry. That's majority of what it is. Do you, do you mean figuratively, or do you mean literally you've been in? Literally, yes. And can, not you, figuratively. can you share what those albums were? Um, were they your albums? No, they weren't they? our albums, no. They were not boys' own albums. Um, so that's what I mean by not every music is that but it was on the stepping stone to that. So you're going back to 1993s into 2000s. And then um, if you look at what the music is today, the industry is today, uh, for all your Sam Smiths, to your Dojo Cats, to your Beyonce's, to, they are so demonic, it's unbelievable. And we can't, it's in front of us. And it's something that we kind of go, oh, it's just music, but it really isn't. It's absolutely taken over the world, taken over our children and taken over everything that's, that, that's coming to the, the times of, of world crisis. And are you talking about the, the messages that are in those, some of those songs, some of those, that, that some of those artists, you know, share with their fans? Yeah, messages and the glorification of Satan. And it, and it certainly had some kind of influence on you, because as you said, that you, you started to get very drawn into the dark side. You were interested in witchcraft and Ouija boards, and, and that led to some very dark experiences for you personally. Uh -huh. um, can you tell us a bit about what those were and how those came about? It came about just through opening those doors. You know, we've got to be very careful on what doors we knock on. And as soon as you start innocently doing a tarot reading or Ouija board or a seance or whatever, them fun things as kids that we mess around with, you're given ground to the dark side. Of course you are. You're now engaged. You've opened the door. And once you open doors, they have the rights. They have the rights to, to come in. And I opened many doors and found myself in a very, very angry, very dark place, a self-destruct place, a violent place. These artists are telling us themselves the price for fame and what they were being used for. 
The devil is using mankind to destroy itself. People that are calling the satanic imagery shock value need to wake up, as these rappers that are using the satanic imagery are telling us is not just imagery, it's what they're really into. This is something that came out of the mouth of a rapper, a part of the most legendary satanic rap group to ever be created, 3-6 Mafia. Koopsta, who was a part of the group, admitted that they were really serving the devil before he passed away, claiming that everything he was rapping about regarding the devil was all real. He even claimed that he was used by the devil to get black people comfortable with worshipping him. My name is Robert Cooper. Rap name, Coops Danica, but you can call me Coop. Yes, I was deeply. I don't know about nobody else, but I can tell you, we know we was doing Triple Six. Hey, we exactly knew what it meant. You know what I'm saying? So kind of didn't want to get into all that, no matter what I blame God for doing, you know. Uh, I, I, I hated God for what he did, but as it came to the triple six, I didn't want, I don't think I hate him that much, but I did it because it was money. And so, you know, you could, uh, I even had the, had the satanic books, uh, the little warlock materials, you know, every warlock got to have a dagger, cut the little punch stars, whatever, little candles, and I had all that, I was into all that. So, because something about the other Bible didn't work out. So I can tell you this, we did, folks with Triple Six, some folks were scared of it and left, put it. But me, I meant what I was saying. I definitely meant it. I said, uh, so God, you're gonna play like that, huh? Well, I got you. I'm gonna make black folks comfortable with Triple Six. Back like then, black folks was like scared of it. You know, they wanted too much on it. It's basically rock and roll. You know, they say Triple Six, they go, ah. Oh. But then they, then they start listening to it and go to church. So they said, um, ask a lot of y'all worship the devil. They said they're Christians, but they are from triple six, you know what I'm saying? So my job was to, out of anger to make black people get comfortable with their name. And I was very intelligent with it because I read a lot about it. You know, so I read a lot of books. I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Baptist, I'm not an atheist, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not a Catholic. It's all to maintain order. Now I can't talk against religion because without religion, which is what they use to maintain order, if that happened, it'd be a lot of chaos. You get what I'm saying? But uh, I read a lot and I put all that into the music and the energy. You get what I'm saying? Because how you get Satan's name going, you get the kids to like it. Now today, see, I think we was one of the first people to break it like that. You would think Triple Six would have been a rock and roll man. So I think I was used by Satan and I think he's a big, uh, I don't fear him. I don't even believe in that mother no more. But uh, just to get black people. You know, once you get the black people, which are the riders of the Bible, they carry the Bible on their back like Jesus, uh, Yasha, whatever his name is, told it the cross, you know what I'm saying, the crooks or whatever. Uh, but anyway, we got those, we got people comfortable with his name and we made sure we made songs <clears throat> the, um, violent. Very, very violent. We made songs very violent. Um, everything, everything was violent. That was an interview of Koopsta, who was once a member of the rap group 3-6 Mafia. In the mid to late 90s, 3-6 Mafia was a popular rap group who had incorporated these satanic themes into their entire brand. They called themselves 3-6 Mafia as a play on 666, which we all know is the mark of the beast. Koopsta admits out of his own mouth that he was a satanist and he indeed was incorporating real satanic beliefs into his music. He admits that the devil used them and his group to normalize the devil to his own people. He admits out of his own mouth that he got black people comfortable with the number of the beast triple six. He also admits he used to actually worship the devil and practice occult magic. What Koopsta is admitting to us is that he sold this soul because he wanted money and the devil's industry provided him with all the money he wanted. In this part of the interview, Koopsta admits that he would use his music to hypnotize his audience with demonic triple six chants. Violent. Sometimes we uh, use the hypnotize, try to come up with stuff to hypnotize people like repeating, like repeating the triple six back to back triple six. I got a bass line, you take the you high. You these crazy ass samples that we've been off music and shit. It was a lot of um, crazy We went downtown to do uh, an album cover for Mr. Styles. And uh, you couldn't know me, of course. I'm, I got on the guy, this is me on the cross. Just me, Paul Lord, and Juice with Crunch on it. He was a this one probably good. We went, went across <laughs> going on this. Uh, in this city by rich folks and, and politicians, it's in this shit. And this shit is really serious. So I told myself, hey, well, I'm not the kind of drink blood because you know, it was 150 some ways of worshiping Satan. Buddhists, you got Satanists, and copes, all kinds of shit, witchcraft, sorcerers. So I guess I was just a goddamn messenger. 
You get what I'm saying? You know, I was a clean, fancy type Satanist. Or whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I guess I would like to, because I, I want the scum of the earth. Like going wearing all the goddamn crazy colors and necklaces. I did have upside down crosses here. I did have black fingernails. But I ain't that crazy off the wall kind. I'm strictly because there's levels in it. You got motherfuckers that go from the black road to the chains and cuts on their bodies to mother with Italian soup song. As you heard for yourself, Koopsta admits he was genuinely serving the devil with his music. All these artists are telling us the same thing. They sold their souls for money and fame, and the devil used them to influence the masses. If you're one of the masses who believes the devil doesn't exist and selling your soul isn't real, wake up. Take a look around. The devil has set up his kingdom here on earth, and these artists helped. They sold out to be used by the devil to trap souls and guide them to a burning end. If you happen to be one of these people who sold out and served the devil, it's not too late to repent. As you can see with Dennis, even if you're too far in, God can still pull you out. Just turn to Christ and allow him to take the wheel. Let him fix what only he can fix. Well, I'm gonna end this one here. But before you guys go, I just wanted to ask you guys to like, comment, and share this video so others may see the truth. I wanna thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.